Hello YouTube. This is part one of a two-part series that I'm calling Death by Foursquare, which uh, is obviously focusing on the hottest rum, at least in the American market, going right now. Uh, the uh, Foursquare Distillery, independently owned, not not that recent, started up in the ni in the 90s uh, on Barbados. Now I have reviewed uh, Foursquare before, particularly this this 2007. Um, it's not one I spend a whole lot of time talking about because it's already got tons of exposure and I like to spend this channel's, you know, resources um, on things that just um, don't get a lot of airtime otherwise. But I do want to do this little series um, really just to answer some questions for myself and uh, that I'm sure other people have had. You see, the thing, the thing about um, Foursquare is in the, in the last, um, I would say, three years or so, it's had a little bit of a backlash from the nerdier side of the rum nerd community. Um, and it's a backlash which I kind of intellectually grasp and at the same time don't totally understand or sympathize with. So here's, here's what the, the backlash kind of consists in. Um, it consists in the, the, them saying, well, Foursquare rum style is too much like bourbon. Um, and the bourbon people like it, and I don't like that. Um, I mean, fair enough, like, like, uh, uh, Foursquare is pushing a very, very oak forward style. You are free not to like that. Um, but the fact that, that, uh, uh, they are pushing a bourbon forward style does not make it necessarily bad. The fact that, Fre that, uh, Fred Minnick has basically written a book that centers around Foursquare does not make it bad by the transitive property of Fred Minnick. Um, uh, so you could also say, well, Foursquare bad because they are they keep putting out the same damn thing um, or small variations on the same style. It's it's very you know you know just boring that way. Like um, and you know I mean another word for for boring is consistent. They are a consistent distillery. Um, no one gets on Laforgue's case. For being consistent, in other words, for just putting out small variations on basically the same whiskey. The difference is with Lafroy, right? You can go down the shelf and buy something that is an alternative to Lafroy. You can buy something from Ardbeg, uh, Kalila, um, Lagavulin. You can even go across get something from Ardmore or Ben Riak. There are tons and tons of alternatives to Lafroy. Um, that is not the case with Foursquare. Um, if you if you are looking for something in the blend uh, molasses based blended rum category that has uh, a lot of age um, and stated age um, has been bottled at high proof um, and without you know any dosage any sugar added in other words um, they're pretty much the only game of town. There are other people that could do it. Uh, Appleton could do it. Um, I think Mount Gay could probably do it, and Diamond Distillery in Guyana could do it. It's just they aren't really stepping up to actually compete with these guys. Um, uh, so it's less, uh, I mean, they, they are, some of them are, t are towing the waters a little bit with super expensive limited edition releases. Um, uh, but so far, you know, you haven't really seen that, that thing around the $80 to $100 uh, uh, price range that, you know, at, at, a, at strength and age, you know, comparable to this, which could actually, you know, start pulling customers away. It's just a different market. So, uh, you know, you could, you could certainly argue market, the particular market this is competing in is boring because only four squares in it. Um, but that's, I don't think you can, can fairly accuse the distillery themselves of being, you know, anything more than just very consistent, which is kind of something you want. They will do fun experiments for now and then, um, uh, which you, you know, they probably don't get enough credit for, honestly. Uh, but you know, they make what they make, and most of the time we don't, we don't, we don't rag on others for doing that. Uh, now you could, you could sort of reply to me by saying, well, why can't they just put out a a pure pot still rum? Um, they got their, their their column still right, and they got their pot still. Why don't they just sell some damn pot distillate that hasn't been touched by anything out of that out of the out of the column still? The thing is, it's going to happen. Um, it's going to come. 
like Richard Seal, the the four square guy, uh, is is many things. He is no fool. He is well aware of the the directions that Rum have been going in recently, which are more like Hamden and more like Claren than they are, you know, like where a lot of South America still is right now. Um, I would be shocked at his uh, incompetence if he didn't didn't already have plenty of pot still stocks away in a warehouse somewhere, you know, happily aging away. Um, in fact, uh, you've, you know, you've already, um, we've already seen releases that are pure pot still lists. Still lists. We've got the, the 2013 for Vellier, right? More on that in, in, in part two of this little series. Um, you've also, if you ever see any independent bottlings of Foursquare from 2002, those, so far as I'm aware, have all been pure pot distillates. So there's a history of him putting down, you know, pot still rum to age. And they're, they're in there somewhere. I just, I cannot believe that they're not, put it that way. Um, and if you're, if you're still going to reply, well, why aren't they talking about it? Why aren't they, you know, uh, well, I mean, why, why would you shoot your current product range in the butt? By promising, uh, letting letting the uh, the word out about something that people can't even buy yet, just just shut up about it until you know it's ready to go. Um, and uh, anyways, but but there is still that that niggling point of just like are the four square bottlings all kind of the same thing, um, really? Uh, so so what? I mean that's that's a fair question, right? They're all very woody. They all have that little hint of you know. Uh, pot still funk, but they're you know mainly very sort of dessert driven. Um, so it's it's a it's a fair question to ask: Are there any standouts in the range? So what I wanted to do with this video series was just kind of compare a bunch of ones, not leaving aside some of the uh, you know the baby bottlings, the the, the sedosity, um, the detente, you know the 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 more entry level stuff, which has plenty written about it already, and just com you know do a little bit of a shootout between. Uh, the higher end bottlings, starting from the uh, 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 the vintage bottlings, and going on, just to see, like, is is there a place where where Foursquare sort of you know um, uh, steps out of itself and gets different and interesting? So that's that's kind of what I wanted to do with this with this little series. So enough of my yapping for this video. I am doing a vertical of three of the Foursquare vintage bottlings. Um, the 2008, the 2007, which I've already reviewed. I will link that down below. Um, and the 2005, which I popped out for a tasting, you know, in the before times and made a little sample of myself for myself. And uh, so all of these um, you know, on, on the surface look very similar. There are little differences. Like, for example, on the 2007, uh, right at the top it says cast strength. It is not. It has been uh, adjusted to fit to 59% alcohol. And happily, uh, they put a little windmill there on the 2008. They are no longer stating cast strength. It's just, you know, uh, the, strength, the strength they'd be bottled at. Um, so we got here 2008. Single blend rum. This is uh, exceptional mark cask selection, thirteen all ex bourbon cask. All of these are all ex bourbon cask. Uh, Twelve years old, bottled April twenty twenty, uh, and it's a blend of pot and column distillate. Uh, Sixty percent alcohol. This is the strongest of the bunch. Um, this is the two thousand seven. Is is says cask strength, but it's not. It is fifty nine percent alcohol, and they got there by fiddling. Uh, ex bourbon cast though, 12 years old, pot column blend, bottled March 2019. Uh, there is, there, it isn't also an ECS, but there is no number on this um, bottle, unless it's on the back. Nope, for some reason there's no number. Um, and then the 2005, uh, bottled October 2017, uh, but otherwise kind of the same thing. This is exceptional cask uh, six, also 59% alcohol. So a couple of little changes. Uh, I imagine there, there might also be some, some different proportions of pot distillate going on here. We shall see. Um, a lot, uh, I know a bunch of the earlier Foursquare releases were heavier on the column distillate because, you know, that was, that was the style back then day. Everyone wanted smooth and that is no longer really the case. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the 2008. We're going to work backwards. Now I do have uh, some some taste and notes written uh, for the 2008. For the others, which um, especially the seven, which I've already reviewed, I'm, I'm more going to be ripping off of the uh, their similarities and differences to the 2008 than reading specific, you know, notes. Um, all right, and that uh, now that we are 10 minutes in, I'll finally st stop talking and, and stick my nose into these. All right. Uh, Foursquare 2008, uh, ECS. Okay, there. I feel like there is a, a kind of popular image of what of like rum flavors. This is hitting that image dead center. This smells like rum. It smells like just very rich confected rum. Um, so there's there's tons of. Uh, um, this is this is the place where you start making pirates jokes. Where where is all the rum gone? Whatever, um, Johnny Depp jokes. Um, tons of vanilla bean, pound cake. Very dessert like. I am I am in a you know a cake factory right now, and it's great. Um, there's also some some birch beer going on. Um, it's very leafy. There's a there's this leafy characteristic to, to Foursquare, which I like. And it's coming out hardcore on this 2008. This smells like in the 2007. I remember getting a distinctive um, uh, uh, Samuel Gwith Full Virginia Flake pipe tobacco note, which is one of the you know all time greats of pipe tobacco. This also smells like Sam Gwith, but it smells like their Balkan Flake, which is. It's a misnomer. It's not actually a Balkan style tobacco. It's a blend of this, the vir full Virginia Flake stuff with a little bit of Latakia, which is this, the, the, um, the smoked tobacco. Um, traditional um, Balkans have oriental tobacco and that doesn't have any. Anyways, it's still a lovely tobacco. It's just more smoky and um, less obviously fruity. And that's kind of coming through here. This is there's there's more of a kind of evergreen tree on fire note going on. There's uh, but then we're we're back to the confected stuff. There's some sweet tea, southern good old fashioned southern sweet tea that you made on the porch on a hot day. Like just fruit syrup everywhere, dried pineapples, um, more cake. So you're pouring you know fruit syrup on your cake and on your pound cake and uh, putting some pineapples on there. A um, little bit of a coffee note too, like a cup of cup of uh, really, really, really strong French press. Like you meant it to put in like two two cups of water, but you only put in the one, and you just had to share it with the person you were drinking it with. Um, but then, I mean, the the so it's very confected. The 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 column distillate is very live on this, and the oak is very live on this. But you're still getting some of that, some of the more um, more funky pot dist uh, note notes coming through. That leafiness thing, um, definitely. But also, there's an anise note to this. A little bit of uh, a little hint of like a black Twizzler, some black pepper, no, 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 white pepper. Um, like maybe one olive, one black olive in there. Um, and then just lots of like coconut shell, cinnamon, spice, cinnamon sugar. Um, a little dried cherry, just a little bit of dried cherry. And of all things, like an after dinner mint, you know, those little pastel colored, um, uh, mints you, that go on the bowl and, and, uh, um, they taste a little bit weird and, um, chemically. That's coming through the the, the pastel uh, dinner mints. Um, it's really a nice nose. It's a very accessible nose, but has you know has the the range and the depth to to keep keep it interesting on the palate. Oh, that is a big boy. Um, big. Very, just a big, big, big rum. Again, stereotypically rummy, very woody, very aggressively woody, but 
um, doesn't quite bring the tannic structure as much as like a, well, a super old bourbon would exactly. I'm not, I'm not chewing on, on, on tree bark right now. Um, but the wood is definitely bringing its, bringing its game. But then, you know, the funk is also in there. Pretty prominently too. Um, there's a kind of, uh, like a Demerara simple syrup thing going on. Um, black tea, overstewed black tea, a little tree bark, but n not bad, not too bad. Um, sweet tea again. Well, okay. And then it's, it's just like, you know, the fruity pipe tobacco thing, the, the, the go with uh, Balkan flake thing again. And then it's just like a big bag of mixed olives. Oh, that's nice. Cinnamon sticks, lots of cinnamon sticks. Um, actually like all the, you know, chai spices in there, like, um, you know, throw in your cardamom, your clove, a little bit, a little, a uh, little bit of ground ginger too. Black pepper forever root beer. Anise, again, salted licorice. A little, actually, there, yeah, the salt is definitely there. A little bit of a, of a seaside note. Gingerbread cookies. Um, more pound cake. Definitely still cakey. But the, the pot distal is, play, is, is much more active on the, on the palate than on the nose. Um, on the nose, it's, it's more, more hinting. Here it's, you know, attacking me just as much as the, as the oak is. Um, a little bit of a, of a, like a smoked tea thing too, like a lapsang souchong. Um, it's nice. I'm going to give this a squirt of water. Oh, almost had an accident there. Sorry, 2007. Oh, my squirter is malfunctioning. So this is at 69%. I'm going to need a couple of squirts to get this to work. Maybe one more. All that good. All right. On to the uh, 2007. So this came out basically the, a year earlier than the 08. And let's see what the differences are. Extremely similar, um, honestly. <laughs> if, you, um, if I didn't have these sitting right next to each other, actually, hello. Yeah, if I didn't have these sitting right next to each other, you know, you could easily tell me one is the other. Um, also bringing, you know, that, that sort of confected, traditionally rummy kind of note. I'm getting, you know, the, the, the oak, the cake, the, the leafiness is a little more subdued, actually. There's a little bit more of a... Of a of a gunpowder note than than the uh, the leafiness that the two thousand eight is bringing. Um, no, no, no. But there is that that tobaccoy note. That's it's more more on full more on full Virginia flake this time. Um, coffee again, but it's more um, uh, less French pr French, uh, you know, French roast or something. More like. Uh, I don't know, something semi elegant, like a like a you know Central American pour over or something like that. Um, still bring some Christmas spices in there. Uh, not really a whole lot of olive. There is there is some licorice. Overall, a little fruitier, um, but at the same time more gunpowdery. The. Uh, on the, on the 08, the, the pot distillate, you can tell it's there. Here it's, it's um, well, I can still tell it's there. It's just a little, little hair bit more subdued. These are, these are very incremental differences. Um, still root berry or um, birch berry on the palate for the 2007. Okay. Ooh, that's interesting. So, this is much silkier. The, the, um, and it's only one percent less uh, less alcohol too. But it comes across less hot. 
um, maybe it's the alcohol, maybe it's the wood influence. Uh, so, so I'm being um, pound, attacked by the wood less, and I'm being attacked by the, the funkiness of the, the pot distal less. This is much more of an easy drinker. Oh, still a big boy though. Um, bring in that, you know, hardcore, you know, like uh, someone out there has made like a, like a Christmas spice simple syrup. Um, that's kind of what's going on, like you know, brown brown sugar syrup, but uh, you know, with some with some cinnamon and stuff in it, that kind of thing. Very peppery. Uh, has that gunpowder note, the tobacco note, uh, the fruity Virginia tobacco note. Um, yeah, overall, just, um, less, just has a little more turned down than, um, than the 2008, like m most of the same elements are there. Um, it's just like, it's just feels a little bit more, you know, homogenized, a little more sanitized. Um, you know, so yeah, turn down. Let's go with that. Um, Lil John would would definitely prefer the two, 2008. And honestly, I think I might too. Um, I'm with Lil John on this. Um, one more one more shot for the for the 07. Definitely less leafy, less herbal, but more of a of a slightly um, more of that slight you know gunpowdery character mixed with this the more fruity character. Um, Otherwise, very again, very similar. We're, we're you know, you know, tiny millim millimetrically different. Um, all right, so I'll give this a couple squirts of water too. Two. Only probably the same, right? Like three. They're all gonna get get three. Mm -mm. Did I give enough to the, to the 08? Let me check. Yeah, these are good. Okay, and let us travel back in time to try the 2005 bottled, uh, when was this again? O October o uh, 2017. All right, um, here we go. On the nose. Okay, um, again, extremely similar. To um, this is so when the internet complains, when the nerdier side of the internet complains that all four squares are the same, you know, th this, this trio is suggesting maybe they have a point. These are all very, very similar bottles of, of rum. There is a, a milk chocolate component coming out here, which was not coming out with the previous two. Um, you're getting, um, it's more similar to the 20, to, to the 27, uh, 2007, I'm sorry, than it is to the 2008, which you'd expect. Um, it's, it's, it's more gunpowdery and more fruity and more cakey um, by just a little bit than, uh, than the 2008 is. And it does have that nice chocolate note, which the 2007 is not bringing. Um, actually, but, but there's a little bit more of an olive thing than the 2007, so it's got that. A little more olive, a little more licorice going on too. Um, maybe a hint of like fresh ginger too, happening in the 2005. These are great noses though. They really are not, not great, extremely good noses. And on the palette for the 2005, Oh, interesting. Um, this one is, hmm. Okay, so this one actually falls short in my mouth compared to the other two, especially compared to the 2008. It's very peppery. It's very explosive right up front. But then in the, as it moves backwards, it kind of feels like it thins out a little bit more. Um, it gets... Well, it's, it's still there. It just gets more and more cakey as it sort of develops in my mouth. Um, yeah, 
Bam. Lots of stuff happening up front. Olives, licorice. Um, uh, some some Lapsang Shushong. That leafiness. I was getting so much more of on the on the 08. But then as it moves, but it feels like it's all happening right up here. And then back here, I'm getting pound cake, pound cake all day. Okay, some, some vanilla too. Um, but that's kind of, you know, the game here. That's really interesting. It feels somehow thinner than the other two. Um, maybe that's maybe that's just my fault for you know the way I, I put it in the bottle. I don't know, uh, but that's kind of what I'm getting. Is it worse than the than either of the other two? I mean, maybe millimetrically, but I mean, these are again these are all super duper similar. So much so that, that at this point I'm going to say. Stop treating these as different releases. Start treating these as, you know, different batches of the same release. Think of, again, to go with Lefroy, think of these as, you know, all, you know, um, as if they were cast strength Lefroy, you know, of different batches and vintages rather than being, you know, here's, you know, Lefroy 2007, 2008, whatever. Like this, these are all basically the same bottling. Um, and that's okay. All right, so as I come back to these with water in them, uh, so far the 2008 is winning by just a little bit. It's just that little bit more, much more uh, turned up. Um, and now that I've had the 2005, it's, it's actually doing more in the back of my mouth. It's doing more on the mouthfeel um, uh, play than the other two as well, especially more so than 2005. Okay, going back to the, to the 08 on the nose. Okay, so, uh, um, oh, where to start with this? Uh, the wood has actually receded a little bit on the nose. The, the, the rumminess, the pot distillate has come out more. Uh, I'm still getting, you know, black, you know, Black pepper now, actually, um, not white. Uh, coffee cake, too, for days. Um, but then lots of licorice. Um, more of an olive character, more of a seawatery character. Um, it's like campfire ash, like smoldering, you know, slightly, it's still, it's still even burning a little bit. There's a little bit of that, of that smoky thing coming out. The leafiness is definitely there. Um, uh, some like, you know, maybe some used coffee grinds in there. Like, um, like you, you emptied out your, your French press and you're kind of, you know, after you had, after you and your friend shared the one cup of coffee and you both kind of smelled it together. Um, brininess. Um, it doesn't develop hugely as a nose, but it's still, you know, super nice. There's exactly also a little bit of a fig thing, like exactly one fig Newton um, in this glass of rum. On the palate, yeah, this is just, okay, I know that I haven't tried the 05 yet um, with water in it, but this is just doing a much better job at the mouthfeel game. With water, oh, <coughs> so there, the oak calms down, which I like. Um, I like oak sometimes, but you know, not when it's when it's too turned up, right? I want it turned up a little bit, not too much. Um, it, the water actually accentuates the sweetness and and also the spiciness, uh, but with while pulling away those sort of more aggressive woody notes. Um, there's even a little bit of a sourness to this now. So, so you got like a, a kind of a um, the sweet coffee cake, uh, sp you know, Christmas spicy kind of thing going on. The cinnamon, um, the pepper, um, but then you're you're gonna throw uh, like some maybe some peking peking duck sauce in there. You know, the little the stuff you sort of dip your your little um, or not dip you 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 spread onto your little um, uh, tortilla thing before you put the duck on. That stuff, that is in here.
and more and more of a tropical fruit component. You're, so you start with the pineapple, but now there's a little papaya, um, a little lime, a little more lime zest than the actual lime. Um, more tobacco, uh, uh, the the Balkan flake I mentioned, the lapsang souchong thing. Um, a little ginger too, a little um, more candy ginger, I would say. I have like finished this glass. This is good stuff. Um, this is extremely good. Uh, okay, so I previously gave, I will tell you the scores I gave these before when I graded them, which was like both of these got 89s. This is that same territory. I mean, I'm tempted to give this a little nudge up to give it an 89 plus. Let me, let me come back to this after I try the others, right? Um, I might give this a plus. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, all right, let's move on to the uh, uh, Foursquare ECS 2007, now with a little bit of water. On the nose, it gets um, far more candied, far more, you know, uh, bakery, you know, you know, cake factory kind of thing. More sweet tea comes out. Um, there's a little bit, a little bit more licorice that comes out. A little, um, you're not getting this, those sour, you know, tropical fruit notes from before. This is much more oaky, dusty. Uh, a little bit more bourbony, honestly, which I'm okay with. I don't hate bourbon. Uh, maybe some dates in there, some, some, some figs. This, the fig Newton from the 2008 is, is here to play, but it's got some friends. Um, and like, you know, a little, little olive action along with the licorice, some coffee grinds again, it smells, uh, hold on. Yeah. On the nose, the 2008 has a little bit more of, of a sour character, which I like. This is much, this 2000, the 2007 is much more dessert like, which is okay too, because I like bourbon. On the palate, um, okay, ooh, gets, gets more sweet. The wood is definitely coming out, but it's not, uh, again, not as not aggressive wood. It's more uh, just like wood juice, wood, wood syrup. Um, oh, you know, bourbon wood syrup. That's kind of what's going on here. Um, a little bit of an absinthe thing going on, which I like. Um, a little bit of a, almost a Snickers bar component. What, what is that bar with without the, the nougat, um, but still has the nuts and the, the, the other stuff in there? Whatever that is, but um, whatever, Snickers bar. Um, pound cake, not coffee cake. There's not as much cinnamon action going on here as in the 2008. Um, a little tar, which is nice. Not a lot of ol oliviness. Still really good. It's just more on a dessert side of things um, than the 08. I, I, will, I will say, now that I've, I've started thinking about mouthfeel, uh, the mouthfeel on this is, is equally good to the, to the 08. Um, it's just, um, it feels like the wood is playing more, and is in play more. Um, and that's okay. Um, all right, moving on to the 05, oldest offering here. Okay, on the nose. Again, it's millimetrically different. Also more desserty than the 2008, but um, there's a little bit of a smoky action going on. There's a little bit of a, like a, you know, a cigar shop is next door kind of thing. Other than that, very dessert-like, very um, milk chocolatey. You know, you got your your milk chocolate covered espresso beans going on. Some coffee in there. Um, your your full Virginia flake tobacco still is in the, is in play. Um, a little bit of like a what is that? A nutshell component. Uh, 
very bourbony still, but you know, smokier, um, smokier than, than the 07, which I like. Uh, on the palate, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. still kind of concentrated towards the front, not attacking the rest of my mouth as much as the, the 07 or the 08. Um, that being said, damn, this is still really good up front. Um, it's got more concentration of flavors up there. Um, it's still not getting those, those sour notes from the 08, but um, there's some nice olive characteristics, uh, more anise, fennel sort of stuff going on, some, some absinthe as in the 07, but a little bit more. Um, and it's still very desserty. Um, one more shot on the palate. A little more smoky too. We're throwing a little bit more lapsang um, into the game with this. Um, I am. I really like all three of these. Um, I've previously given the 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 O five and O seven an eighty nine which is a pretty solid score for me. Um, and we'll now try the 08 one more time, just to see if I want to give it a, a nudge up. No, I don't think, I'm gonna keep this at 89 too. Um, it's different. You know, do I like it more than the others? Yes, but it's just, you know, it's just a shoulder. It's just a little shoulder. Um, I, it's not even enough to give me a, a full plus. It's like a quarter plus extra. Um, these are all very good, very similar. You would not, you know, someone who likes the one would not be, you know, would want, not want to throw any of the other bottles out the window. Let me put it that way. Um, and uh, I have not disproved the hypothesis that all four square is the same at all. Um, but that's what the next video is for. So the next video is going to be six four squares. Um, I'm going to throw in, I was going to throw in the, the winner of this trio into that. And that's, you know, by a, not even a nose, like a fraction of a nose, like a nose hair. Uh, that's going to be the 08. So it's going to be the 08 and a bunch of other uh, high end four squares that are going to duke it out. And we will find a winner. And we will find out if all four squares are, are indeed the same or if there is one four square to rule them all. Or maybe multiple four squares. Maybe there. Maybe we'll find a loser. Let me put it that way. Um, that's all I got for this. Hope this was entertaining. Uh, all 89s across the board. Um, very, very, very good. Bordering on great, not quite there in great, great territory, but that's, you know, give them time to get the pot still stuff out. Thanks very much and uh, cheers.